Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video 43, or video 2, in the subsection on the Helmholtz theorem. Specifically, I'm going to discuss what happens when we take the Laplacian of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector. This is going to be equal to minus 4 pi times the three-dimensional Dirac delta function. There are many videos previous to this which are relevant, but the most important three are videos 40 and 41, where I discuss the Dirac delta function, and video 42, which is the first video on the subsection on the Helmholtz theorem. Here I showed that when we take the gradient of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector, it's equal to minus the separation unit vector divided by the square of the magnitude of the separation vector. So let's begin. So the first thing we need to do is take the Laplacian of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector. So I'm going to plug immediately in the result from our previous video, and we have the uh, we have to take, I suppose, the gradient of minus the separation unit vector divided by the magnitude of the separation vector to be squared. And I've plugged in the uh, I suppose what we need to do here in component form. Note, by the way, it's quite messy, and for this reason, I've made the substitution that alpha is equal to x minus x prime to be squared in the i hat direction. My plus y minus y prime to be squared in the j hat direction, plus z minus z prime to be squared in the k hat direction. Now, we need to take a, the, 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 uh, the gradient, which means we need to take the derivative, uh, the partial derivatives, I suppose, in the x, the y, and the z dimensions. What I'm going to do is work in the x dimension first and see if we're able to, to I suppose, extend to three dimensions in an easy way. So first of all, I'm going to take the partial with respect to x here. The differentiation is pretty straightforward, and I leave it to the viewer to check the differentiation. Note, by the way, that the magnitude of the separation vector is an actual fact equal to the square root of alpha. So for this reason, I'm going to divide by the magnitude of the separation vector. This results in the partial with respect to x being equal to the bottom left of your screen. So we have minus alpha plus 3 times x minus x prime to be squared divide by the magnitude of the separation vector to the fifth power. Now I'd like to extend this result into three dimensions. Note, by the way, that if we extend it to three dimensions, we're going to get minus alpha three times. So we're going to have, I suppose, minus three alpha. And plugging in for uh, what that means in terms of the separation vector, or the magnitude of the separation vector, we're going to have minus three times the square of the magnitude of the separation vector. Now, for the 3 outside of x minus x prime to be squared, when we extend this to three dimensions, we're going to have 3 outside of each of the, uh, each of the components here. So really what we have is 3 times the square of the magnitude of the separation vector. And this is all going to be divided by the magnitude of the separation vector to the fifth power. So when we put them all together, Essentially what we're going to see is we're going to have minus 3 times the magnitude of the vector to be squared plus 3 times the magnitude of the vector to be squared. And this, of course, is 0. So it seems to us that if we take the Laplacian, I don't know what's after happening there now, bear with me. If we take the Laplacian of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector, we should get 0. So as it stands, it seems like a pretty plausible result in that the mathematics seem to stand, um, they suppose they would probably stand a scrutiny. But we should question this result, and I'll show you why now. So if we note the divergence theorem, I've written the divergence theorem in the middle of the left-hand side of your screen. If we take the closed surface integral of a vector field, let's say capital B, dotted with the infinitesimal area element, that should be equal to, or that is in fact equal to, the volume integral of the divergence of the vector field B integrated over a volume. If we compare that to what we have up here, we see that in this case, the vector capital B is in actual fact the gradient of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector. So if we just compare, I suppose, these particular equations here, what we see is that the right-hand side is 0. So we have the right-hand side of the divergence theorem. So the right-hand side of the divergence theorem is 0, which means, or I suppose it implies, that the closed surface integral of the gradient of one over the separate magnitude of the separation vector 
dotted with the infinitesimal area element is zero. So what I'd like to do now is actually compute this particular surface integral and see what happens. So in spherical coordinates, the infinitesimal area element dA is r squared sine theta d theta d phi r hat. This, I suppose, is where we have the radius constant. And you can look at my previous videos if you want to discuss spherical polar coordinates. Just to remind us, I, I suppose, of the, uh, the placeholders we have. We have that the separation vector is r minus r prime, that we have the magnitude of the separation vector is r minus r prime divided by its magnitude, and we saw a number of times at this stage that if we take the gradient of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector, we get minus the separation unit vector divided by the magnitude of the vector to be squared. As an aside, notice that the uh, Laplacian or the gradient operator is with respect to the unprimed variables. And if we take, if you want to compare what happens if we take the unprimed uh, operator versus the primed operator, we essentially need to add, or we need to um, adjust by an, a, mi a minus sign. So to continue on, we're looking to take this closed surface integral of the vector field, which is the gradient of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector, dotted with our infinitesimal area element, or of a sphere, I suppose. So we need to compute this particular integral here. I can tell you that this is not an easy integral for us to perform. The main reason this integral is reasonably complex to perform is that it's it requires quite a bit of thought in order, in order to decide where you are going to place this sphere or which you're going to integrate. Where is the origin going to be and what will the radius, what will be the magnitude of its radius? So on the top right of your screen I've noted the divergence theorem, I suppose in words. It says essentially that if you integrate over the volume you of, of the sources, that's going to be equal to the closed surface integral of the flux. So our function in this case is minus 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector to be squared. We know of course that this flows in the uh, magnitude of the separation unit vector direction because of course we have, if we look up on the top left of your screen, we have this unit vector here. So our vector field flows in this particular direction. Now just to remind us I suppose of the geometry, I've drawn the vectors r prime, r and the separation unit, the separation vector. So just to recap, on the left hand side we have a vector field which is flowing in the, uh, the separation unit vector direction. And we're trying to perform an integral by dotting that with a, I suppose, a surface, infinitesimal surface area element. But we need to look at the direction of r hat here. And we also need to look at this particular r squared value. And we'll see why now in a moment. First of all, it's best that we simplify this, but of course we're not able to change the value of the function. So the function is minus 1 over the separation unit vector divided by its magnitude squared. But if you look, I suppose, if you look carefully, what we really have in this surf closed surface area, uh, closed surface um, integral, is that we have on the bottom the square of the magnitude of the separation vector, but on the top we have this r squared value at the moment. Now, of course, we can't adjust anything on the left-hand side because that's our vector field, and we're just given that. But we could potentially adjust the radius of our sphere, our integrating sphere. So it suggests, really, that we change the value or we integrate where we have a radius instead of r squared, but the, we use the magnitude of the separation vector to be squared. So what this means is that we have the following infinitesimal area element. It's still, of course, in this arbitrary r squared or r hat direction, but we've actually added a radius which is equal in magnitude to the separation vector. Now, this really should show you that the r hat direction must, in fact, be the same as the separation unit vector direction for us to have a non zero integral. Just to convince you of this, if you look at the top right of your screen, I've drawn once again our geometry. And I've suggested three places we can center our uh, we can center our sphere. We can center it at a, which is at the origin, b, which is at the uh, the r prime position, or c, which is at the r position. Now, notice, like I said, 
that the radius we're, or the, uh, we're going to be integrating in the r hat, excuse me, on the separation unit vector direction, which is, is in this direction here. So if we center our sphere at, we'll say sphere A, we're going to get a zero integral. If we center it at C, we're also going to get a zero. Well, we, we might actually get a zero integral there. But if we look at the sphere B, really what we're saying is that in order for us to get a non-zero uh, integral, we need to center our sphere at B, and we need to have the radius of our sphere equal to the magnitude of the separation vector. Okay, so what we're going to do is integrate at the position R prime, and the radius of our, sp our sphere will be equal to the magnitude of the separation vector. So this integral is pretty straightforward to compute, and I've done so on many uh, occasions in the past. So just to confirm what we have, we have the closed surface integral of 1 over the separation, or we have minus the separation unit vector, divided by the magnitude of the separation vector to be squared, dotted with the radius, which is going to be the separation vector to be squared, sine theta, d theta, d phi, and we're going to have the direction, which of course is going to be in the separation vector direction. So we're going to integrate theta from 0 to pi, and we're going to integrate phi from 0 to 2 pi. Altogether, that means the closed surface integral is equal to minus 4 pi. Now this should immediately be ringing alarm bells for you because if you go back to our divergence theorem, which are written on the top right of your screen, we saw already that the volume integral was equal to zero, but we've just calculated that the closed surface integral is equal to minus four pi, all of which, of course, is equal to the Laplacian of one over the magnitude of the separation vector. How can we, how can we, I suppose, fix this? How, how are we able to amend this or come to terms with this? Really what we're saying is that there is another function or distribution which we're missing and it's the Dirac delta function, or the three-dimensional Dirac delta function. So putting them all together, the only way we can reconcile this is if we say that the Laplacian of one over the magnitude of the separation vector is in actual fact minus four pi times the three-dimensional Dirac delta function. So this is very important for us in order to prove the Helmholtz theorem, which allows us to discuss scalar and vector potentials and gives us the electric potential which uh, which is very important, the scalar electric potential and the magnetic vector potential. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.